Today on Zuna's Lidon, we have a night vision monocular scope that I bought off of eBay for $30. It says don't work on it, don't tell me how to live my life, I'll do what I want. It's listed as for parts hunting, and anybody who knows me knows that I like hunting for parts. So, take that off, take a look inside, it's uh, yeah. Hmm, does it turn on? Kind of. Hmm, let's see what it's doing. Turn off the light so that way I don't wreck anything. We'll take a look inside there. That's interesting. You hear that click? Sounds like we might have a arc out inside of the unit. And that is what's causing the fault. Um, it could also be a relay, but I really don't think it's a relay. I don't see any reason for there to be a relay inside of one of these devices. Uh, yeah. Take it apart. Well, that's a little screwdriver for the job, but it has the bravery to tackle it. It has a battery in it. A little, uh, three volt lithium cell. Check the voltage on there. <laughs> Three point two volts DC. Well, that looks good. Interesting. <laughs> Let's go ahead and test it out on our power supply. No, oh, that is negative. Right. So 2.7 volts, 2.9 volts, 3 volts, perfect. All right, positive connection that I have prepared for this task. And a negative connection that I have prepared for this task. Let's point the device away from my face. Interesting. Don't hear that click anymore. See if I hear it or not. Oh yeah, there it is. So here's what it sounds like. That certainly sounds a lot like static discharge to me. Alright, well, yeah, let's open it. Uh, and uh, there's the phosphor screen right there. So that's where the electrons from uh, the magnifier intensifier tube hit, and uh, that's what produces a green color. And uh, I got the IR LED. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that does come off. Huh, nice. No, uh, no real screws on here. Oh, some screws on the inside. So there's the the photo sensitive cathode right there and there's battery input pretty interesting yeah let's open it up see what the screws reveal to us A really small night vision unit, isn't it? Noisy cars outside my house. City living. Is that all of them? It looks like it. 
looks like. Okay. Yes, it is. Or is it? Hmm. I think some force is needed at this point. There it goes. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. Oh, what batteries do we have? Or what wires do we have? Not batteries. Uh, looks like for the IR illuminator and a common ground for that. Right. So, here's a common ground point right there. And there's positive and then, then the positive going to the IR LED in there. Nice. Well, that's cracked. Don't think I did that though. Maybe I did. I don't feel remorse for it. How was I supposed to get to that? How did that even get put in? Okay, let's see if the rest of it comes out now. Let's see what the problem is. Without zapping ourselves. Hmm. So what now? Oh, the screws on the side. I see. They have glue in them. Well, that's not very nice. Oh, I'm gonna need to get another tool for that. I think I'm gonna desolder all the wires before I do that. Get into it. That way, I'm not working with this whole thing flapping around in the wind. and remove those negative wires. And I see those must have been soldered underneath these yes they were probably should mark those yeah That'll do. Right, now we're getting into that. That's going to get interesting with all of that glue around the edge. And they really are glued in. Oh, that's... That's gonna be fun. Real fun. And just like magic, they're out now. So, let's remove 
the inside unit carefully. Wow, there's a, a seal around here. That was forceful. All right, here's what we have. Neato. And uh, you can kind of see inside of the image intensifier too. It's a highly reflective, uh, highly reflective top there. All right though. Yeah. So ground. Uh, which part of these wires was our positive? That doesn't help at all. Ah, uh, that guy. Okay. Coming from. Oh, that's nice. It's a completely unmarked wire. Can do. Negative. And completely unmarked wire. Which is that one. Oh, that one is going to be our positive. I hope. Which it is. Alright, cool. Well, let's see if we can see any art breakdown on the inside. So, turn off the light. Look for some sparks. Oh yeah, I hear it. It's quite nasty. Oh yeah, you see it right in there? I don't know if you can see it right near the top, but we have breakdown right there. So, let's solve that problem. Hmm. But first we have to figure out how to remove this. That's going to be uh, interesting. How to remove. So it's just, oh, it just pushes out. <laughs> well, that's uh, easy. Let's not touch the parts. See, oh yeah, a little bit of arcing right there, it looks like. Uh, things I'm hesitant to touch because they have high voltage. There we go. So, you can see the little step-up circuit here on the side of the intensifier tube. And the little transformer right there. It doesn't seem like there really is much of a voltage multiplier. Unless it's all in this section here. Ah, uh, yeah. Looks like we have some high voltage uh, insulation breakdown right here. Looks like. Wonder if that was it. Let's see where that corresponds. Looks like it got wet. I wonder if some hot glue would fix that. Hot glue or super glue? Let's try super glue. Oh, 
Yeah, it works for my high voltage transformers. So, so maybe, maybe it'll work for this. Just gotta get the glue out, right? That struggles. Come on. You unreliable thing. Yeah. Nothing can be easy. Is the light I signed up for. That'll work. Oh yeah, it totally looks like a little voltage multiplier in there. Yeah. Alright, now we don't want any of that glue getting in on anything. Give it a little quick spritz. And we'll uh, wait a few hours and see how it looks uh, after it sets. Let's talk about how these image intensifier tubes work. So it's pretty easy. Let's go over the electrical components first. So we'll see here on this board, uh, it's a self-resonant circuit. And what that does is it takes the three volts and it chops it up into little pulses essentially. And it does that by this little transistor right here that resonates. So it's on, off, on, off, on, off. Those little pulses, three volts, get sent to this device right here. And that device is just a little step up transformer. Not quite sure how much voltage comes out but I'm betting it's probably about 100, 200 volts. And then we have the voltage multiplier. So the transformer wires, they come in, they come around over to here and then into these two areas right here. So this is where the input stage of the voltage multiplier is. The voltage multiplier has a bunch of capacitors inside and those are a little high voltage probably ceramic capacitors or the poly um, ethylene cap capacitors would be the thin film caps and then from there we have the negative high voltage terminal no positive positive high voltage terminal yeah this is a positive voltage multiplier uh, all right so that's how the electrical side works if we look at the optical side of it, the high voltage side, we have uh, the image intensifier tube itself. And the first thing to note is the photocathode. So this layer right here, you can see kind of has a orangish silver reflective uh, coating on the inside of it. And what that coating does is uh, when photons come and strike the plate, this releases electrons off the negative terminal. You can see how it's grounded here around through to the chassis. After the voltage multiplier, we have this high voltage line right, right here and it feeds into the inside of the tube. I'm going to turn off that shop light. See if I can backlight up the inside of the image intensifying tube. You can see a little bit inside of it. So, see where the Anode wires come up and through. More noisy cars in my neighborhood. And uh, that's where the phosphorus plate is. So that is your anode. So it's basically a CRT tube in there with a Viticon tube on the other side. So you may be familiar with a, uh, with a, what a CRT tube is. You might not be familiar with what a Viticon tube is. Let's take a look at both a CRT tube and a Viticon tube real quick. 
So here I have a Viticon tube, and this is what they used in video recorders before they had the CCD chips, uh, the charge coupled devices. And it has the same photocathode right here on the top, uh, which is the negatively charged region, I think, no, positively charged region, it has bounced electrons back. Um, and then you have your heated cathode. So what this does is it would shoot the electron gun up and the areas that had a charge on here would deflect the electrons back and they would be picked up as an electrical signal. You'll notice on a CRT tube, the same kind of pin arrangement uh, where you have your heated cathode, but instead of the electrons being bounced back, they would illuminate the phosphorus on the front of the screen. You'll notice that uh, the phosphorus look pretty close. This is a green phosphorus coating. This is a, more of a white phosphorus coating. It's pulled from a little viewfinder. So, I want to do some more insulating on this. Uh, some hot glue and some pieces of material between here and the grounding shield that went on the outside. Get it all put back together and I think it'll be good to go. So, first steps first. I'm going to use some plastic insulation. Not uh, plastic insulation, but uh, plastic diffusing material from a LCD TV. This stuff we've tested up to 30 kilovolts, so it holds up pretty well. And uh, there's only about 2 kilovolts inside the circuit, maybe up to 5 kilovolts, if even. So not much going on here. So let's get that all insulated a little bit better. Well, first I'm going to put some insulation between the top and the photocathode. I'll cut a little strip out for that. We'll go in this area here around. Oh, that's a little, a little too much. Yeah. So let's insulate that with the boundary layer. Don't want that shortened out anymore. Come on. There we go. Just like that. And uh, I believe that's mostly set. So let's go ahead and kind of glue that into place with the hot glue gun. And uh, I'm going to put an outside boundary layer on that as well. So I'll be cutting up another portion of that material. And uh, I'll be placing that on here. I want to use super glue or hot glue. Maybe I want to use super glue for that one, I think, eh? Yes, sir. Put that down. Yeah, maybe glue will work on that. Smaller. Well, actually, no, let's go with that. I'm going to use super glue anyway, right? You know how this is going to turn out already.
Yeah, yeah, you know, works for getting termites out of trees, right? Go ahead and give that a decently good spread around. And uh, we'll glue this on and uh, put it by a fan so that way super glue doesn't build up on the front of the lens. Not the lens, but the photo cathode. Oh, you think that glue application would have been more sufficient, right? Teamwork. <laughs> Let's get the other side real quick as well. Oh, he's trying to become one with me. I'm not ready to be a cyborg yet. Ammo. Let's get this side a little bit too, eh? Yeah, that is, that is the necessary arc suppression this device has been looking for. Reassembly time. Let's get it all put back in its proper positioning. Let's see. Ground shield. I suppose that can kind of go in wherever. Oh, uh, yeah. Important piece. Make sure that these wires are available. When I want to side of them, we got that all pretty much isolated now. Looks good. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm.
lined up, eh? So this is going to be the interesting part, isn't it? I want you to just line up. Oh, don't tell me that plastic barrier that I put in is going to allow me to do what I want to do. No. No. Oh, removing all of that wasn't easy. New tactic. Thinner tactic. You know what that sound is. That is the sound of tape. So I'm going to try to use a little bit of tape. And uh, put some hot glue in there. It's going to be a little thinner. So I think this is you're gonna work a little bit better. Oh, I don't have to worry about it being so thick around the edges. Oh, around the multiplier. Nice and tightly. Just like that. And then, yeah. Kind of fill in that little pocket with hot glue instead. See how much of that we can fill in. It only needs to be that little front area. Alright, well, I'm gonna try that. So, we'll let that sit in. Once that cools, you gotta reassemble it once again. Oh, yeah, it's pulling in nice. I think that'll work a lot better. A little bit more alongside of the other side. Voltage multiplier as well. Oh yeah. That's pulling in nice. Way nicer. I think I may double up the tape on the very end of the positive side of the voltage multiplier just a little bit for some added insulation once again not all too much oh, apparently I have to keep that thickness down boo Right. That should do rather nicely. Oh, it's leaking over here. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, let's get let that cool down. Let's try this process of reassembly again. So, hopefully this time, it'll be good. Put that in there, or along the end. 
Found through there on the bottom. A little plate in place. Now let's see if this lines up this time. Da -da 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 ah, stupid shield. the wire come from now ah <sighs> yeah and broke off of that looks like okay well we'll fix that once we get everything lined up optically one two three Right. That's how the blue wire back on. They're really tough wires. I think, I think we can electrically test this now. All right, which should be, is that the marked wire, unmarked wire? Uh, way to go, Pat. You rub the marking off. Okay, nope. I got it. Here we go, unmarked wire, unmarked wire. Battery. Negative. Positive. Probably should uh, turn the light off. We're running in the amplifier too, eh? Power. Oh, you have to hold it. Interesting. Well, it seems to work. So we see on the inside, absolutely nothing. Oh yeah, I see a little bit of glue. Well, let's get it pop back together. Looks like it's good. So, while well, I put this back together, I should also mention that just like the CRTs, the Viticon tubes, and the Electron, oh, the Viticon tubes, CRTs, vacuum tubes, fluorescent vacuum displays, uh, things that deal with electrons like this operate in a vacuum. So there's a little bit of space inside there. Real space. This goes in first, doesn't it? Or does it? What sits on there? Awfully nice, doesn't it? Oh, that's backwards. What am I doing? Uh, that makes more sense. I'll go with this. Wipe the screen off real quick.
looks good and complete. They used really good glue in this. Mm -hmm. Yep, those are the three wires that I need. And I just gotta line up the front, and it's all set. Okay, so I can get these little itty bitty screws in back into the side. Seems like I'm encountering some resistance putting this little uh, center piece back in. I don't know if I like that. We'll see if there's any negative re repercussions. I'm not quite a fan of that level of resistance. Why are you resisting me? Uh, I need something bigger. Mmm, this is not going as planned. It's becoming a real struggle. Get it? Why? How do you rate this product? I rate this a three. Eh? Oh, nobody move, man. Those screws finally line up. You know, I'll, I'll straighten that out later.
still feels like a Happy Meal toy. Okay, well, uh, that screw doesn't seem to be friendly. Yep. Uh, goodbye. It'll be our little secret. Oh, and this goes on. Is it around here? to uh, double check to see if it works with everything in the tube again and the reason why I am t turning off the light like this is because I just don't want to damage the uh, intensifier to contact looks good still and you can see that uh, they do tend to glow for a little while still the last thing to do now is reconnect all of the wires so let's go ahead and do that uh-huh. Yep, that's out for the IR on uh, non-common. Um, that one, like we really need the IR, right? That's the one line. That's the one shot, okay. So, first the two ground connections. Yeah, that'll work. I lied. Mm 
Why don't they use regular heat shrink? I got this like weird hard plastic on here. Better solution time. Let's see. Cut that wire down a little bit. Solder. Thanks, white wire. Oh, well, that's not shrinking. Well, more than one way to glue a canoe. Some people have to pay for this kind of drama. Positive tone. Negative in. Now, you're gonna go and give this another test and then hopefully reassemble it. Got the front cover on. Let's see, power. Looks good. Now, uh, I just gotta wait for the tube to die down. There you go. And put it back together. Let's see, took all those wires in up there. Get out of there, little green bit. What? Get in your little home. Oh, it's the product that keeps on giving.
want an easier to surface night vision unit, this is not it. I'm opting to leave this seal out. It doesn't really go back in very well. In fact, this thing almost goes back together worse without it. Thing is certainly losing its rating real quick. Going from a three to a two. Looks good. It made in Russia. You know what? In Russia, scope get fixed on you. But in America, you get fixed on scope. Uh, let's put the lens on, take it outside, and test it out. Looks good. It's good night time out. The appropriate time to test out the night vision unit and see how well it works. So, let's take a gander. Oh, it's not too bad at all. I'm actually fairly impressed with that. Let's test out the uh, IR illuminator. That could be better. Well, that's a very nice fix. So I have some ideas for future videos involving the night vision unit. And uh, I hope those would be equally as interesting as uh, this repair was. So, if you enjoyed the video, which I hope you did, give it a like. And as always, stay tuned for more. Oh, man, that's really good, actually.